when I'm sitting like this, I see that I'm you. I'm you. There is no any separation between me and you. So I just recognize the fact I'm not doing anything. I'm just recognizing that there is no any separation between you and me. And I'm happy to recognize that. It makes me happy. When I'm you, I can be myself. When I'm not you, I cannot be myself. When I'm myself, I am you. Dear friends, uh, thank you very much for coming. Every time I can see you, and if you should have think that I see you for the first time, seen you very often in life. We know each other. If you think uh, I meet one group for the first time, you are not using the wisdom. If you use the wisdom, you look at me and say, how wonderful to see you again, one group. It's wonderful to see you again. I don't see you for the first time. You are my good friend. You are my very good friend. And we, we are seeing each other again, again, and again. And every time I see you again, I'm very Feel that part. Feel that. I'm very happy because when I look at you, I see you inside. And I always say to myself, What a beautiful insight! What a beautiful insight! I've been looking for insight. I was a monk uh, in the tradition of uh, Tetnyakan, and I, um, 
have been looking for insight. Because I was in confusing. I was born in the war in 1968. Some of you may remember that year. Mm -hmm. The Tet Offensive, mm -hmm. you remember? And a child was born under bombs and bullets. Anger, confusion, fear. That was me. And when the war ended, the fear didn't end. Didn't end. I came to the West with fear, anger, frustration, and suffering. And I met a person, the first Vietnamese person I met without fear. He had no fear. That was in 1997. I met him as a young man and he had no fear. He had peace. He was a monk. But I recognized him as a nutrition. Because he, uh, he printed the peacefulness from every step I met. He printed, he was the author of the book, Peace is Every Step. Mm -hmm. And you still, you still can feel me on emotion about this. I met him, the first man of fear. The first Vietnamese man without fear. I was, I was full of confusion, fear, <coughs> anger. To myself, I want to learn from this man to be peaceful. I want that. And in order to be peaceful, uh, you need one thing. You do need one thing. You just not say, Oh, I, I can be peaceful now. No, you need one thing. And that is inside. That's the wisdom. And I've been looking for many years, many years. This is wisdom, that is wisdom. And every time I was taught by a kind of a knowledge, an idea, another wisdom. Wisdom is not an idea. And I look, I look for wisdom. And for a very long time, finally I found it. Wisdom. And since the day I have peace in my heart. And you may ask me, you can ask me, how does it look like wisdom on you? How does it look like? And I can tell you very clearly because. I see very clearly. I see very clearly. <coughs> and I can tell in a very clear way. <coughs> you may think that wisdom is in me, right? What I find it must be somewhere in me. What is in you? The wisdom I have found is there in you. I have been looking for the Buddha. The Buddha 
die is someone who has wisdom and have found Buddha. That's the good news I would like to share with you. I have found Buddha. We need the Buddha. And who is the Buddha? It is you. It is you. You are the Buddha. And that's why every time I look at you, I see you, I'm very happy. I've been looking for you for my whole life. I was born in a world of fear, confusion, suffering, pain, hatred, discrimination. And, and I always said, please Buddha, where are you? We need you. We need your wisdom. And I thought Buddha was someone who has the You know, we have an idea about Buddha. Me too. But now I finally have found Buddha, the true Buddha, the living Buddha that is you. I really see that. Since, since the moment that I have found you as Buddha, I found the peace and the peace. Because Everywhere I can see you, I can see the Buddha. You may not see us, you suffer. It hurts. It really hurts. It is because you have the wisdom. You should. You shouldn't suffer too much. If you suffer, it's okay. Sometimes I suffer. Sometimes we suffer, right? But when we have the wisdom, we know when we have wisdom, we, we suffer in a different way. I suffer. When I when I see on television the shooting at school, the children are killed. Innocent children like you, I suffer. But but now I suffer with wisdom. And in the past I suffer without wisdom. <clears throat> and and that's that's the reason why I'm here. I want to come as a friend. I want to make the steps. I want to make the staff of my teacher. If you look at me, you see my teacher. Mm. Anyone of you has seen my teacher before? Mm. Do you see him in me? <laughs> I am the mm. And just as, as true as you are. You are the Buddha. And so you are allowed to suffer. It's okay. We do suffer. It's good that we suffer. Because compassion is only possible with suffering. Compassion means suffering. Compassion means you can feel the suffering of each other. I can feel the suffering. And when I uh, worked as a prison chaplain, I came to prison, I saw a prisoner, and I could feel his suffering. But, but I could saw the wisdom too. And, and man, no, no one had ever touched that wisdom in me before. Because everybody, Recognize him as a prisoner, as a criminal, as an offender, right? So, so in the in Africa, in the American uh, prison, the prisoner has to to wear a badge, and on the badge it says offender, right? Mm. I would like them to bring also one more next to offender, that's the word Buddha. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you fight with you. Want to go with me? Buddha. They, they have the right to know they are Buddhas also. That is the right. Like me. And came as a Buddha child. I can heal the wound. I can touch my happiness. I can touch the wisdom of the Buddha in you. So I'm not only Buddha child. I'm also my teacher. And and a criminal, a prisoner is not only a criminal, not only a prisoner, not only a offender. He is also a Buddha. And I came in, and sometimes it's, it's very nice because sometimes I sit there. And a person who, who couldn't see the future, couldn't see himself, couldn't see life, couldn't see anything, he could only see one thing. That is, that is not. Everything was black. Well, he, he couldn't touch anything. And that is a prisoner. That is your prison. When you cannot touch anything, when you are totally lost, you are also a prisoner of your consciousness, of your fear, of your anger, of your confusion, and you 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 cause you cause in that case suffering to yourself and to other people because you you don't have you don't have use your insight. It doesn't mean that you don't have your insight. You know, it doesn't mean you don't have your insight. When you suffer a lot, it doesn't mean you don't have your happiness. We think we have to, to get rid of suffering before we can be happy, and that is a misstep of our thinking. So that is ignorance. That is when you don't see yourself. So you are fighting between good and bad, and, and bad, good and bad. You don't stop the fight. You're okay. <laughs> You're okay. You're free. You have. You are happy. Or I can say, when you say I'm happy, you are happy. It's not strong enough. I would like to say, you are happiness. You are happiness. You are happiness. Everything you can touch in yourself is happiness. The body, your feeling, everything in you is happiness. Whenever you can come back to yourself, you can touch happiness. Happiness is there. <coughs> like inside the wisdom, happiness is there. And I have seen that in the hell. Because a prison is kind of hell. Mm -hmm. People will be walking out in the prison, they know that. It's kind of hell. And, 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 and I came in and I, I met the prisoner and there was so much suffering that I couldn't say anything at all. I just sat there and said, it's okay. Let's just breathe together. I'm here with you. And, and it's very funny because most of them, they didn't know anything about Buddhism. They didn't have an idea that I'm sharing Buddhism, but I didn't share Buddhism. I came and I saw death. Who's in there? A Buddha. Who's in there? A Buddha with wisdom, with happiness. And he doesn't recognize that. He didn't recognize that. I did. That's my insight. That's your insight. I did. So I sat there. I didn't give up. So let's breathe. 
Let's go through the suffering because happiness is there already. Don't be afraid. Wisdom is there. Freedom is there. Don't be afraid. And I said, I told myself, and I, I went through with him with compassion, with no fear. I went through the suffering, and it took about 30 minutes before I could see the change of the film. In the, in the good field, that I look at him and say, Wonderful. He said, Thank you. That's <laughs> <laughs> the first conversation, great conversation. Said, Thank you. And the first time he could make contact with life. Mm. The first time. Can you imagine that? A young boy who just committed a murder mm. without knowing why, without knowing why. Mm. But yet, completely confusion. Completely fear, ignorance, wanted to hang himself. Couldn't, it's not easy. Couldn't make contact. And in prison, they didn't know what to do with his boy. They sent to me, and after 20 minutes, for the first time, not since the murder, but since in his life. Because I've talked to this boy, young boy after that, and I understood why. But he was totally lonely, confused, lost. <laughs> and for the first time, he could make contact with. Happiness, freedom, and especially a home. A home. Do you know what it is for home? A home is the place where you can be yourself. A home is a place where you are accepted by everybody. A home. And he, he, for the first time, he had the idea of a home. I, I show him a home in him. Minutes. And I discovered because it happened again and again and again and again. And I didn't know why about twenty minutes. If you really make this a wisdom, suffering can last only twenty minutes. If you ask me how long does suffering last? Some people say forever. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. If you ask me, I say suffering lasts about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can, you know, you allow your iPhone to watch your a timer. <laughs> so if you suffer, it's a timer. If it lasts more than 20 minutes, you know, oh, I'm not using my wisdom. <laughs> If you use the wisdom, it can only last for Japanese. Japanese. And if you only allow it last to tell this, you will save yourself, you save many life. Because if you allow it to stay longer, it destroys. It destroys. It destroys the relationship. It destroys the earth. Do you know why we have a kind of global warming? Because we allow suffering to last too long. Yeah. That's a reason. Not because this or that and that try as well. To me it's very clear. The global warming, it is because we, we suffer too much. If we can stop our suffering, the world, the earth will become cooler. Let's start today to make the world, the earth to become cooler. Save the earth. <coughs> Be yourself. You are so wonderful human being. You are Buddha. Save the children. Save me. I need you. I beg. Can happen here in 
this wonderful country. If you wake up, we have the most wonderful source of energy on earth. If you don't wake up, we can cause the most painful things on earth. This country, this country, you are so wonderful people in this country. If you wake up, you can do such a wonderful thing. That's why I come. I come to beg you to wake up. To be a Buddha. You are a Buddha. If a prisoner with so much suffering can be a Buddha, you can be also a Buddha. You also can be a Buddha. You, you are a Buddha. Can be. It's not a good you are, because I found you. Imagine, one night we walk outside and we see Buddhas everywhere. <laughs> when you see Buddha everywhere, you have respect for everybody. And that is the society I would like to see. I want to see that. I believe in society. I do believe. And I go to that point to see the awakened society. I want to see that before. I do the last breath. I want to see that. I want to see that. And I say to myself, enough discrimination, enough suffering, enough confusion. It's time to back up. As a society. And it can happen very quickly. It's not a matter of time, it's a matter of making use of the wisdom. There are three things I would like to share. The first thing is happiness. You are happiness. And when you suffer, it's okay to suffer for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to suffer. It's, it's good to suffer. Maybe you don't have forgotten that. It's good to suffer. When I see tears of suffering, you know, in the past I couldn't cry. Because I didn't allow suffering to be there. I saw suffering as an enemy. But suffering is not an enemy. Suffering looks exactly as happiness. With wisdom. With wisdom, suffering is the same as happiness. The first moment you can see suffering with your wisdom, and you're happy, right? Already, you're already happy. Oh, darling, are you there? Darling, I can see you now. And it can last only, it cannot resist the kind of love. It can resist only for 20 minutes. You know, only 20 minutes. If, if your darling is suffering, it's okay. Don't say, don't suffer, don't run away, don't be angry, don't go out and drive around. No, say that. Darling, I know you're suffering. I see you're suffering. But I see the wisdom, I see the wisdom. It's okay to suffer the other. And that is the message of love. Love cannot be without suffering. Love cannot be. So suffering is okay. And now when I say about some when I see suffering and, and I can cry and happy. In the past I couldn't cry. Because I couldn't deal with suffering. I suppress suffering, was afraid of suffering, and now not, I'm not afraid anymore. I can, I can cry. I'm happy that I can cry. So when you can cry, it's okay. It's good. It's, it's wonderful that you suffer. That you can suffer. And you are allowed to suffer for judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Because happiness is there. You are happiness. Everything in you is happiness. 
His finger is happiness. The fingers, his finger is my happiness. Every time I want to get a touch of happiness, it is there. Nothing in me is not happiness, including my suffering. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful. The first thing I would like to do is to invite you to nourish every, to be in touch with every day. It's happiness, and it's there. You don't need to make it larger or smaller. It is it's so nothing is as solid as happiness. That is what I have discovered. Happiness, true happiness, has no cause. If it has a cause, that's desire. True happiness has no cause. I'm going to I said to my wife one a conference talk about this. And she said, okay, I will organize for you. And this November I have a conference, international, international conference, with the team. True happiness has no cause. And that is your reality. We just forget that. We just forget that. And the prisoners, they all have forgotten that. And every time I can, and you can you imagine? Many times I didn't say anything. I just came sometimes, they came and sit, and then they came in the room and with a lot of anger and shouted, and I didn't say anything. I just there and, and the game the cat come down because I allow anger to be there for 20 minutes. <laughs> it was okay to be angry. But, but the moment they came in the room with my present, they felt something else. They had been reminded of their own wisdom. So the anger came to and, and and slowly they came to me and sat with me. Normally I I didn't talk much. And after half an hour, we ended the meditation. They said, Thank you, Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. They're so smart. They're so sensitive. Prisoners are so sensitive. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the moment they are, they have found themselves, they have found their family, their family too. The children, people feel it. Why? Sometimes there was a person who came home and his wife didn't recognize him. Who is it man? Who is it person? Who is it peaceful person? I've never seen you like this before. Who are you? Hmm. The way you are with the children, I have never seen before. Who is it man? And they told me this story. It's so happy. You, you are not an individual, a small individual, you are everything. The moment you are nourished yourself with happiness, you are nourishing me. Every time you are nourished with happiness, you are touching your happiness, and you, you, you might hear in your ear, my God, thank you. And you hear the trees, the bird singing, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your happiness. You, it's, it's really because you are nourishing the whole earth. That's the first thing you want. So if there's one day you forget to get in touch with your happiness, You've lost one chance. Every day is a chance. Every day. You want to see 
Let me uh, welcome the society. Yes. Yes, we do. We do what? So nourish your happiness. You are the society. You are the society. I said you are the Buddha, now I say you are the society. You are. You are not the body. Don't struggle. Stop struggling. It's time to recognize yourself. So the second thing is recognizing yourself. Come back. I am society. I'm the Buddha. I'm you. You are me. You are society. So nourish the society. Help society. Help me. I will meet you once, but I will stay with you forever. To practice with you. With you. And from elsewhere, I practice nourishing you too. I promise. I won't forget you. I never forget you. Because you're too important for me. You're my Buddha. Make use of your wisdom. And the third thing I would like to say is that's our home. We can go home. What's your home? Because when we don't go home, we just give you like each other. You're an immigrant, I'm American. That is discrimination. A home is a place where we don't have borders. We don't have borders. There's envy, there is. There's no, there's, there's no border between you and me. Because, I mean, you think I need to practice to, to know my borders? You don't have one, anyone. How can you know your borders when you don't have it? <laughs> you cannot know your borders. You are everything already. Don't accept anything else than anything. And that's our home. When the moment I found home, I'm no longer to fear for death. Because if I die, you will live for me. I know that. That's my home. I trust you. I trust our children. And let's fight for our children. Let's work for our children. Let's live peacefully for our children. Because that's our truth. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Let's do something together. If someone is shooting our children, killing our innocent children, it is and it hurts when we see that, and we are angry when we see that, but anger is not enough. We should take action. Come together to practice, nourishing our happiness, nourishing our togetherness, letting know that we are all brothers and sisters. And that is the practice we need to do, to do together. We need to do that practice together. Let's come like this and tell we are brothers and sisters. And that will reduce the violence.
where does violence come from? Not from that man, from the forgetfulness, from not using our wisdom. So let's get used, make use of your wisdom today and tomorrow and after tomorrow. Remind yourself, right somewhere when you wake up, today I want to make use of my wisdom. Today I want to be, I am the Buddha. And that the wisdom can guide you and show you your happiness. Capacity, your, 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 your peace, your power, and your capacity to change. To change society from a violent society to a peaceful society. And I believe, I believe, it will happen very quickly. And a global warming up. I don't, I don't say it, this as a good wish, I say this from my insight. I know it. I know we have found it. We have found it. We are going to make use of it. And we will live, we will live in a happy life, a free life. We enjoy a society full of violent systems. And we need to get it as a happy family. We can do that. You can do that. Please do that. Please make use of the power of the compassion of wisdom. You are the Buddha. That was my talk and uh, and this uh, uh, nice way by standing up and bowing to each other and then this talk. And at this, uh, you can uh, get a copy of my book and I'm happy to sign mm. And I thank you very much for being here. <coughs> and I'll come back again and again. <laughs> I know, and you know what it is. Is practicing to be the Buddhas. Not difficult. It's a practice of enjoyment. Not difficult. And we will have time to study uh, Buddhist psychology to understand the working consciousness. Understanding is good. Understanding can help. Let's stand up and call each Thank you. See you again. <laughs> we don't make use of wisdom. We only see them as offenders, as criminal people who need, that we need to punish. Give them education. And if you give them education, they can understand themselves, they can end their violence, anger, and causing suffering to other people and
to themselves. So, so every time you study the history of a person who has done something terrible, and you will see that we have had many chances to happen before, and we didn't. Please, please try to, to make a research to see where I'm correct or not. We don't help. We need to help. Why don't we help? Because we don't make use, use of wisdom. If we make use of wisdom, we can help. And the person can make a mistake. And when he's help, he will stop to make a bigger mistake. We need to have compassion and not to punish. So a wet up society is a society where we have each other, we accept each other, we, we can see each other, ignorance, uh, suffering, pain, and, and, and we have. We have by education. So my deep, deep wish is one day I can set up Kind of, that kind of school here in this case to give education for especially for children to understand themselves. And that is the path I choose. And I want you to help to make it possible. We need that kind of schools to give education to people to understand themselves, to discover themselves, to understand themselves, and that we will reduce a lot. Suffering, and therefore we won't have shootings anymore because we have been practicing uh, helping and reducing the violence in our hearts. Yes? I have other questions. You can have another <laughs> question, yes. <laughs> And you think, uh, who am I? No. If you are peaceful, you're changing, you're making the society peaceful. And that is a very special way of communicating. So the fact that we have is things like you describe can happen. Very painful, but not hopeless. It is only hopeless when we don't have a way, path, we don't have a wisdom. We do. And we have, we can change. You can change, we can change. And we have to, we have to do something. Not from anger, from frustration, but from wisdom, from deep confidence, from trust. We must trust that our president has wisdom for us. And we need to communicate the wisdom with our president with love, not with anger, not with frustration, with love. Only love can change. Yeah. Only love. Yeah. So I don't ask you not to do anything, I ask you to take action, but action with love, the action of love. Love in action. Love in action. 
but it's intention. Use your use your love and take action. If I don't take action, I'm not here. I'm here because I take action. Yes. Please. Thank you so much. Yeah. I am thinking about what's been happening in Myanmar and the Rohingya. The Rohingya people in Myanmar, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? No. This, this is a group of Muslims yes. who have been attacked in Myanmar by Buddhists. Yeah, I know. No. Now you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. I cannot understand this. I cannot, I don't know how Buddhists can do this. Can you say something about this? Maybe because they are Buddhist. <laughs> if they are not Buddhist, they don't do this. Mm -hmm. This is my thought. Yeah. This is my thought. If if that when I go to prison, I don't go in prison as Buddhist mm -hmm. to meet Buddhist to mm -hmm. have Buddhist and come in prison as a non-Buddhist. That's why I can make use of the wisdom of the Buddha. So if you want to be a Buddhist, you have to be a non-Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you cannot be a Buddhist. <laughs> I go Buddhist is already a discrimination. Mm -hmm. I'm exactly. Buddhist, you're Muslim. Exactly. You know, in prison, the Muslim came to me to practice. So if you want to be a Buddhist, you have to be a non-Buddhist. There's no other way. So you ask why they did like that? Because they were Buddhist. Yeah. It's painful to see that. Because the Buddha is in the Muslims. Yes. yes. You, you look at the Muslim, the Muslim, the, the true Buddhist, look at the Muslim. He must say, I am a Muslim. Mm -hmm. As a true Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A true Buddhist, when I stand in front of a Muslim, and as a true Buddhist, I will say, Dear sir, I am a Muslim. <laughs> because I'm you. Right? So what has happened, happened there is because they they are Buddhist, they, they think they are Buddhist, and yet they are not Buddhist. Why? Because they don't make use of the wisdom. So because they think they are Buddhist, they are not Buddhist. They want to be Buddhist, they have not to be Buddhist. Then they can be Buddhist. Then they can make use of their wisdom of the Buddha. If you don't make use of the wisdom of the Buddha, how can you be a Buddhist? So you think you are Buddhist, and yet you are not Buddhist because you don't make use of the wisdom of the Buddha. So if you don't make use of the wisdom of the Buddha, you can't be a Buddhist. So the people who had caused so much suffering to the Muslims were the people who believe they are Buddhist. And they are not. It's now 10.59. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a good time maybe if people would like to buy this wonderful book, and I've read it. Excellent book. It's 1895, and you can pay your credit card or check to our center, and then we're sending the proceeds to them. And then uh, I want to thank you on behalf of our center for being here and sharing thank you. your wisdom. For inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will upstairs we have some yummy food that uh, Frankie has made so we'll just make our way upstairs the back stairs are good or these stairs are fine too and you can eat wherever you know upstairs or on the garden uh, and a, a contribution is welcome $10 thank you thank you very much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.